Hey everybody, Reds fan 1979 back here with a special baseball card video. Decided to do something a little different today. Um, I don't buy a lot of graded cards, but I do have a, a small stack. I'd say maybe 15 to 20. Um, most of the singles I buy are ungraded just because of the price difference. But anyways, I just wanted to kind of share some lessons learned through uh, buying graded cards. Uh, so each one of these three cards here represents something different. One was, uh, uh, I'd say, a fair deal, a good deal. One was an extremely undervalued card when I bought it. And one was I probably overpaid for, but I just like the look of the card. So anyways, I uh, just want to share some lessons learned with that. And also, if you guys have comments on your buying of graded cards, you know, please comment below. Would love to hear your feedback and on these cards or any that you've bought. So uh, let's start with the card real quick that I bought that um, I probably overpaid for. Um... This card right here, the 2014 uh, Topps Allen Ginter Billy Hamilton rookie. You know, Billy Hamilton, um, his cards, I think they started out a little higher price, a little hotter, you know, back two, three years ago. Um, you know, he was he was fast. Uh, he was probably the fastest person in baseball. That's up for debate now with Trey Turner. I still think he's a little faster. But anyways, um, his cards have lost some luster you know, this is one of those cards where I probably would have been better off buying the ungraded version. Um, it was one of the first graded cards I bought. It was one of the cheaper graded cards I bought. It was $15, but seeing as that the base card's only worth like a dollar to a dollar fifty, that probably wasn't the best um, investment, I guess you'd say. Um, not that I really wanted to sell the card or anything, but. Um, just in terms of the premium, I, I was pretty much paying solely for the grading. Now, depending on if they did a, a group grading, you know, some, some cards you can pay more than $15 just to grade with BGS. So, kind of depends on how they had it set up. But anyways, um, I like the look of the card. It's pretty neat, like the antique look. I don't usually like a lot of Alan Ginter, but I liked this year's. I, I think I, I, it looks really neat and nostalgic. Um, it is a nice 9.5 gem mint card, but, um, yeah, so that was kind of a lesson learned. Um, one guy at a card shop, one of my local card shops told me that, uh, you shouldn't buy a card unless, um, the cost to grade it is, um, half of what the card's valued or less. So, you know, in this case, it was really the majority, um, everybody kind of has their own rules and standards they live by, but anyways, so... That um, was, I would say, my overpurchase, if you were to call it that. Um, and there's a lot of cards out there on eBay like this. You know, there's a lot of cards that... Now, there's some cards that might be base cards that are like Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, that are, you know, maybe a, a base rookie would be 5 to $8, but maybe the graded ones carry a higher premium. But for some of your regular rookies... You know, getting them graded, uh, even if they get a 9.5 or 10, I guess you got to ask yourself if it really makes sense or not. Um, some people just like slabbing cards because the li they like the way they look. Uh, I happen to get these car a lot of these graded cards because I wanted to make a shelf um, with some red stuff, you know, memorabilia, autographed baseballs and things like that. I've shown that to you guys. So anyways, uh, everybody does it for a different reason. Now, this card I picked up at a card show earlier this year. It's uh, Billy Hamilton, 2009 Bowman Chrome Draft Picks and Prospects. Actually, the first Bowman card, and it's a Gem Mint 10. So I paid $10 for this card. Um, it seemed like a pretty fair deal. Um, I kind of tried to, you know, negotiate with the guy a little bit and get him down to 7 or 8, but he wouldn't really budge. He said it was priced to sell, um, which probably in this case is a, a pretty fair deal considering that it's the first Bowman card. Those are usually worth more. They're more desirable to collectors. Um, you know, the base version of it might only be worth a couple of bucks. Um, but in this case, because it's a first Bowman card and a Gem Mint 10, you know, there's a lot of people out there. We could have a debate about BGS 9.5, BGS 10, uh, PSA 10. You know, everybody kind of looks at different things and has things they like. So... Um, but generally I go for P, uh, P, excuse me, BGS 9.5s or PSA Gem Mint 10s. That's usually what I look for in the cards. The, the pristine 10s for BGS are outrageously expensive sometimes and they're really cool and they're really low population. But, you know, un unless you just want the, 
the fact of having one, you know, trying to sell one, you know, it, it could be hit or miss. I don't know how many collectors out there really buy BGS 10s. I see a lot of them for sale on eBay and not selling. So again, that was one where I probably got a decent deal, probably a pretty fair deal, we'll say. Let me know if you guys disagree with that. Now, this one is a really cool card. It's one of my favorite cards in my collection. The 2002 Bowman Draft Picks Chrome Joey Votto card. Gem Mint 10, 9.5s all around, or excuse me, Gem Mint 9.5, 9.5 subs all around. This card I bought two and a half to three years ago. I did it auction style on eBay and beat out several other people and got it for $28. Now, um, I've seen several uh, PSA 10 or BGS 9.5s like this go for between $200 and $400. So, I think uh, Joey Votto collectors have come out a lot more in the last couple years and are paying higher prices. So in terms of this card, I would say this is definitely was a good investment. Again, it's the first, um, it's his first Bowman card that was put out. Um, it, for some reason, it doesn't say first Bowman card, but I can guarantee it was the first Bowman card that it was put out for him uh, when he was drafted uh, at a young age. So Really cool card. Um, again, this one I'm going to keep in my collection. I'm not planning on selling it, but a great investment. Probably one of my most valuable cards uh, in my collection at this point based on what they're currently uh, selling for um, on eBay. So anyways, I uh, just thought I'd share some thoughts with you guys about this. Please feel free to offer feedback on any of these cards or uh, any tips or tricks that you guys have learned, uh, any lessons learned. Even, you know, failures. I'd love to hear about some other people and their uh, successes and failures with buying graded cards. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, have a great night, and please like, comment, subscribe.